Well, you see, <laughs> would you come over and check on parties? I will let you work on it. Check on me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what's up guys hello what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze neze mwa neze pepperempe <laughs> and this is neze pepperempe guys begin to rate my rich anti vibes begin to rate my rich african anti attire down in the comment section you all know my plug regal and radiant and boy oh boy her pieces are driving me to jupiter and back <laughs> whenever i step out wearing her pieces all next turn all next turn to tolo tolo and they're turning around like oh my god you look so regal you look so beautiful yes that's what you get when you shop at regal and radiant so you guys know my plug my trad plug here in canada even if you're in the u.s wherever you are around you can reach out to them they can send you some of these beautiful pieces now that the weather is all beautiful and bright you can rock your beautiful african pieces it is not every time that you rock or you book clothes rock your african look come on be proud of who you are show what your mama gave ya <laughs> anyways guys welcome back to the channel and today's video i consider it a very very necessary in fact our last video on mother-in-law thing necessitated bettered this video i wasn't expecting all the emotions and reactions that that video brought in fact all of you were crying i said you people can't cry why are you people crying again cry cry babies <laughs> some people were saying listen for you to say this video are you for you to do this video are you didn't cry jesus i'm like see me <laughs> so it stemmed up a lot of emotions in fact so many people reached out to me personally via email neze you are so lucky you are this your mother-in-law this your mother-in-law that and I'm like, okay, I wanted that video to be about me eulogizing my mother-in-law in her lifetime, not later in life. I'll start reading her eulogy when she's gone. No, I wanted to eulogize her where she can read it and appreciate it and know how much she means and she matters. So I didn't want to bring in myself into that video. I wanted the video, the whole video to be about her. But one important thing that I didn't mention, but that should be spoken about too, is that for any relationship to be blissful and happy and sweet, it takes the contribution of both parties. Whether it's married relationship or sister and sister or colleagues or mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, no matter the relationship, when you see a relationship that is thriving and is beautiful, just be rest assured that the two parties are playing their roles and they are playing it well. So yes, in as much as I wanted that video to be just about my mother-in-law, guys, trust me, I also put in a lot of effort in the relationship I have with my mother-in-law and my in-laws in general. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys, in fact, we're going to be discussing deep. All daughters-in-law, all mothers-in-law, you need to watch. Because, you know, when I put up that video, oh, my mother-in-law is good, your mother-in-law is good. But the truth is that these problems that we face with mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, the problem can stem from either person, either party. So let us not assume that because our mothers-in-laws are not on social media or TikTok or Instagram typing their experiences, let us not assume that they are not bad daughters-in-law too. Wicked daughters-in-law. So as we urge the mothers-in-law to be good and treat their daughters-in-law well, it is also important for us to talk to ourselves, yes, as daughters-in-law, to also play our part in the success of that relationship so in today's video i'm going to be revealing all i do to have a very fantastic relationship with my mother-in-law and the mistakes that we daughters-in-law make that sometimes ruin the relationship that we now come out and start crying my in-laws don't like me my mother-in-law don't like me relax this video is going to be very very educative first the first thing i did is that I too came into my marriage and came into my husband's family with a very open heart and open mind. Obi Sarambara, you see this heart? I opened it like this to my in-laws too. As my mother-in-law accepted me, that is the same way, the same energy I used in accepting her too. In fact, when I was going to see her on that first day, I already knew that I wanted her too to be my best friend. I was willing to embrace her. I took and have taken and will continue to take my mother-in-law as my own mother. That is exactly how I see Mama Vale. 
like my mother. Not being judgmental, not nursing ill feelings, not trying to pinpoint on what she has done and what she didn't do. She should have done this, she should have called me when I went home. I went with zero expectation. I went with zero of all of that. Ready to cut her some slack, ready to give her a long rope. Don't get it twisted though. There are some mothers-in-law that open their arms to their daughters-in-law, but the daughters-in-law do not want that kind of relationship. They do not want that kind of friendship. They do not want that kind of sea finish. They want everybody to date their day. As the mother-in-law is trying to be close or friendly, they are giving the mother-in-law cold shoulders or cold feet. Yes, it happens. And any relationship where it looks like one person is the one putting in all the work, that relationship cannot work. Even if it works, it's going to be a slavery, it's going to be like a slave-master relationship, relationship of servitude. For a relationship to be mutually respectful and loving, both parties must be willing to cooperate and love each other. You know, sometimes uh, when we are doing something, we might not know that we are doing it. When we are narrating the story, we will narrate it from the perspective of the other person being the villain. That's why you need somebody to talk to you and open your eyes to some things that you may not have done right. That you are thinking that you did right or you are justifying your wrongdoing. You meet your mother-in-law, you come into the family, you are suspecting your mother-in-law. You are suspecting her that she wants to hurt you. You get pregnant, you, you hide it from her, you don't tell her until you give birth. You force your husband not to tell his mother that, he, that her grandchild is on the way. You start conny conny, sidelining her, keeping a distant relationship. Then when the energy is returned, you start complaining, my in-laws don't like me, forgetting that you are also the one that gave bad energy. So to bring this point to a close, I also was very willing and open. You see this my heart? I have a very open heart. I don't go around suspecting. You, so you saw the pictures. My mother-in-law will touch my... I don't even... Some people do not even allow their mother-in-law to even rub their tummy or pray for them or come close to them or touch their things. They are always, you know, hey, hey, she wants to use me. She wants to touch me. She wants to hurt me. Something will happen to me. I'm not saying your beliefs are not valid though, but please do not complain when that mother-in-law starts giving you negative energy too. Because energy begets energy. Two, so, I was ready to share. Yes. In the last video, I narrated the kind of closeness that my husband has with the mother. An only son of an Igbo woman who is widowed. Of course, I knew that my husband is also her husband. And I came fully prepared to share him instead of to sever them. Instead of me to be jealous of their relationship and try to separate them, I was motivated by the kind of relationship that he has with his mother because it has made him a better man for me. She has raised him to be a king for me. So why would I envy such relationship? Why would I want to distance that relationship? And that's one of the mistakes that we daughters-in-law make. We come into a family and we want to columbi the, the man to ourselves. You said the Bible say a man shall leave the mother, a man... Please don't misquote the Bible though. The Bible say the man shall cleave to you does not mean that he will forsake his family. That relationship, he also needs a support system outside of you. He also needs that good relationship with his family outside of the one that he shares with his now nuclear family, you and your children. It doesn't have to be us against the world. It doesn't have to be me, me uh, or them. Why don't you carry everybody along? Why should he cut ties with his family or slow down on the relationship he has with his siblings because he's married to you? If you want a blissful in-law relationship, you should be willing and happy to share your husband. Because before he became your family, he was their family. And that is the mindset I have. If my husband comes, I need to visit my mother, I cannot even, I cannot contend that. Please do go and visit your mother. My mother has surgery. I need to be in Lagos with her babes. Please go. In fact, back then in Nigeria, when my husband gets, comes back from work and my mother-in-law is in her room, he comes back, he's tired. He lays down in our room and he's like, oh baby, let us just be together. Let us watch a movie. I'm like, oh yeah, go and stay with your mother small. Go and stay with Mama, Mama Ville. He'll be like, baby, I'm tired. I'll say, no, go and keep your mother company. When I see my mother-in-law bored in her room, then her son will now come back and lock himself up with me. I will not agree. I will be the one to send him out. Go and spend some time with your mother. Go and gist with her. Don't just come and lock yourself with me in the room. I will be the one to make my, my husband go out and stay with his mother. They can take a drive around. They can gist about their family stuff. I don't need to be there because every family has what's private to them. Their internal gossip. 
who excuse them and ensure that they bond. The truth is that some of we daughters-in-law are agents of division. Guys, I'm going to be speaking the fact. You can set your heart and pick the message. Of course, these messages are not cast on stone. You apply it as it relates to you, right? This is not science. It's an art. So it's not always one plus one equals to two. You weigh yourself and apply the one that is applicable. The truth is that some of we daughters-in-law are agents of division instead of agents of unity. We come into a family, we sow seeds of discord. You come into a family, you find fault with the, their surname. Okay, fine. You change the surname, then your children start being a different thing. It's okay. You stop engaging in all their family traditions, all their family ceremonies, all their what, what makes them different. Every family has their culture or what makes them different, things they are used to. If some of it doesn't conform to your beliefs, okay, there's a way you can manage it. But you cannot just come and extinguish everything cut off everything and make it obvious that it is a new regime. There is a new queen in the kingdom. Is it fight? Why are you coming in defensive? Families that are closely knitted, brothers that are close, love each other. Then you come in, you start sowing seeds of suspicion. This your brother is always controlling you. This your brother is jealous of you. Maybe because of that's how you had it in your home. Forgetting that every home is different, if you are coming from a home where brothers which hunt and kill each other, do not introduce that culture to your husband's family because they will know when it started. They will know who brought in. Every mother knows their, ch knows their child. Every sibling knows their brothers. They will know when his mindset starts being polluted and they will trace it to who did it. And how do you expect them to love you when you have come to introduce an alien culture into the family? Brothers that used to eat in each other's house, drink, each other's, drink with each other, you start separating your children. You start suspecting everybody that they want to kill your children. When brothers are having misunderstanding, instead of you to tell your husband the truth, if he's wrong, oh my God, <laughs> my husband knows me. He, maybe he comes to tell me, Mama Ville did this, Mama Ville, I'll keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Me. <laughs> you are coming to report my best friends to me. Oh yeah, now. <laughs> well, some of us will now put fire inside the distance. Instead of you to at least keep quiet because mother and son will always relate. Mother and son will always reconcile. Siblings will always reconcile. So when they are having all those their madness and their fights, you don't have to come in the middle and make it worse and fan the flames. Try and be neutral or try and tell your husband the truth. If my husband, for example, comes to me and tells me, oh, this is my uncle, he didn't do this, he didn't do that, I would, I would make excuse. Instead of to start bashing that his family, I would even make excuse for his family. That is exactly what I do. I would tell him, well, don't blame him. Don't blame him. That is how people of his time used to reason. That's how they reasoned then. Or he tells me, oh, when I was small, this is my auntie's wicked. I did this, she flogged me with six strokes of the cane. I'll ask him, what did you do? If they say, I'll tell him, if it is me, it's 12, I'll flog you. <laughs> He'll be like, babe, what kind of woman? Are you supposed to be on my side? I'm like, baby, if it was me that you did this thing, it is 12 strokes, not six that would have flogged you. So instead of immediately jumping and, you know, pitching tents and pitching, putting him against his family, sometimes see reason. If your husband is wrong, tell him. Your mother didn't do anything to you, your sister didn't do anything to you, you have to learn how to control your temper or control your words. That is what a decent in-law does to a family. You meant not to, not to scatter. And that is exactly what I do with my in-laws, in 100% in honesty. Because check them, check them my dear sister, take for example, these your children that you are raising to love each other. See the way my three sons are like this with, my, with their sister, they are always together, they love each other. Then just imagine they get married. And their wives now start put, putting them against each other. How will I love that wife that has come to destroy my family? Because that's what she has done. That would come and now start making Chine Merem to be scared of eating in Chinobim's house. Or making Chikamso disrespect Chine Merem because his wife has already polluted his head that Chine Merem is controlling him. Even when he's just playing the role of a father and an elder brother to correct his younger brother. So please, daughters-in-law. Our in-laws see when our influence is rubbing off on our on our husbands, our negative influence. Let us carry our in-laws along. Let us not come into the family and change, put everything upside down. Some things will change, yes, but everything doesn't have to change. Some things should still remain. 
especially when it doesn't hurt anybody in fact guys i feel like someday my mother-in-law and i are going to write a book on mother-in-law daughter-in-law relationship and in fact general family relationship marriage talk my mother-in-law and i are going to write a book because there is a lot to learn there is a lot to say there is a lot of information to pass if you would like to read a book from me and my mother-in-law do drop in the comment section three another way i maintain my relationship with my mother-in-law and my in-laws is tolerance there is no relationship that can work without tolerance so because even those of us that have parents that have been married for 40 years my parents are still are married for how many years up to 40 years now they still disagree so if people can live together for 40 years for five years and they can still disagree so why will frictions or why will why wouldn't you expect that your mother-in-law will do something that is not 100 percent pleasing to you then if she does one bad thing you hold it i remember when your mother did this why are you counting your own mother's wrong that's way the way you're counting your in-laws wrong they're human so i tolerate my mother-in-law so much and the truth is that you have to realize that they're from a very different dispensation very different age very different thinking very different reasoning from we the social media babies the way they conceptualize life is very different from our own ideals so sometimes there might be clash of cultures you must learn to tolerate your mother-in-law some of us do get angry with our mothers-in-law easily we hold on to past wrongs past misdeeds forgetting that your own mother sometimes does some things that you hate some things that icks you some things that you do not like has that made you hate her has that made you cut her off has that made you keep your distance from her tolerate them and the truth is that with menopause so some of them are dealing with widowhood though some of them are dealing with all their children leaving them and just their alone loneliness some of them are recovering from the trauma that, your, that their husbands put them through those age where fathers used to beat their wives like like what i don't understand some of them are recovering from trauma it's not because they don't say it some of them have been mentally damaged from long years of bad marriages some of them are going through old age you don't know that old age has its own problem at old age they become very sensitive little little things that don't matter it becomes it starts to matter for old people so these are different things that can make your mother-in-law act out of line sometimes we as daughters-in-law should learn how to tolerate them do not over analyze do not over criticize do not over report them do not over correct them overlook the irrelevant stuff if it's things that can put your life or your children's life at jeopardy at risk of course you cannot sit back and allow you know pepper to enter your eyes right but if there are irrelevant things that do not really have effects on anything you let it go for example when i was in nigeria i prefer to put um rub my children cream but my mother-in-law prefers to rub oil and when they're going to school she'll rub them oil they'll be shining like like fried fried puff puff <laughs> let's be alone i'll use cream i won't use oil but i don't have to go and start over now does that oil that she's using now baby oil does it have any damaging effect on them no so why do i want to start overcorrecting her in my house making her feel like all her methods are not okay the mommy don't do this do that do this don't do that don't use this don't eat there don't touch that my children this is how i like it for my children my children my children calm down calm down farabale calm down my mother-in-law mama veil <laughs> there's this thing she does she puts banana in my children's rice they eat rice and banana me I hate it to my bone marrow i don't understand how people eat rice and banana and i never eat it now my mother-in-law comes to my house she puts rice and banana for my children if she wasn't there i would never put it for them because that is not my style but her putting banana in my children's rice will it make them sick no will it make them die no so why am i interfering why am i you know why can't i tolerate it even if it goes a little bit overboard like for example, Chidobe, my second son, you guys know that even before I had Chidoyewa, I used to plate my son's hair when they are young. <laughs> I used to kiss them to practice for a baby girl. So I used to plate their hair. So Chidobe, of course, he had long hair before he turned one. We were plating his hair. My house helped them. She would plate this boy's hair. All this place would swell up, small, small boils, as in her hand was so tight. And my mother-in-law, she didn't like it. It was paining her when she sees my son's head like that, you know. So there was one day I went to work, I came back from work, I saw that my mother-in-law had used scissors to trim the hair. Did I want my son's hair to be cut at that time, to be trimmed? Well, maybe not. Trimming the hair 
Is it a permanent damage? Will it hurt him? Will it kill him? Will it make him sick? Is there any problem? No. So I do not have to go and start fighting my mother-in-law about that. Or make a mountain out of that. Just put this scenario on social media. Just post it on Instagram and ask. You see young girls, the kind of answers you get. Then you start wondering why they are crying. My in-laws don't hate me. My mother-in-law hates me. My in-laws hate me. You will see the answers. You see young girls saying, what rubbish. I will do this. I will do that. I will not take it. I will not. And you'll be wondering, is this how to maintain relationships? Relationships is about wisdom. Any relationship that you don't apply discretion and wisdom, you will scatter it. So you try as much as possible to not sweat the small stuff. Do not apply emotions that have permanent effects on situations that are temporal. That hair can grow back. She didn't do it to spite him. She did it because she loved him genuinely. And she didn't want him to be in pain. Having his hair so strong because he had very strong hair to comb it, he'll be yelling. She did it out of love. She is his mother too. So, in a word, one thing that I am very particular about in my relationship with my mother-in-law and my in-laws in general is tolerance. I tolerate excesses a lot and I do not hold things to heart easily. The fourth thing, the fourth way I am making my relationship with my mother-in-law smooth and sweet and easy, that everybody is happy, I'm happy, she's happy, her son is happy, is that I have made her extremely comfortable in my home. I told you that in Nigeria, we're living in a smaller house, but my mother-in-law would want to stay in my smaller house and stay with me because she has extreme peace and comfort. Some of us, when our mother's-in-law come to our house, they will pet her like bed. They will raise hand and raise leg, stay one corner like bed because they don't want to overstep, they don't want to offend you, they don't want to break rules. You go use rules and regulation, finish the old woman. Forgetting that old people, they stay where they are happy. Even if you put them in a mansion, that's why back then, our great-grandparents of those days, if you bring them to <laughs> Lagos, within three days, they want to go back to the village where they are free to do what they want to do. If it's snuff, they will snuff. Because even if it's in a cockroach house, if that old person is happy and they're themselves and they're comfortable in that small place, they'll rather stay there. They'll prefer to stay there. They'll be happy staying there. So I made my home like, in fact, my home is like my mother-in-law's home. If she likes, she tie wrapper, come to the parlor, sit down, put her two legs on the table and be eating granuts or eating corn and pear. She's free to eat what she wants, enter anywhere she wants to enter. Not every time you can tell your husband, tell your mother not to eat in the parlor, let her eat on the dining. Tell your mother not to come back here, here. Tell your mother, tell your mother. And by the time these men are relating the messages to their mothers, the mothers know the person that the thing is coming out from his mouth. Do you think that the mothers don't know their child? my children i know what they are capable of saying and what's capable of meaning something to them so if they get married and i go to their house and every day they're coming to disturb me with one thing or the other i would know who is making them do it because i know what they are all capable of so these mother-in-laws know that you are the one that they are instigating their son to, to 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 make them uncomfortable in the house relax how long will they stay papa they will go you have your home back for example let me relay this example to my own mother-in-law and how I treat her in terms of this making the house comfortable. My mother-in-law is a very WhatsApp person. She she's very social media savvy. She's everywhere. She's even on TikTok. <laughs> I think Mama Vila, I saw your name on TikTok. Is that you? <laughs> comment in the comment section if that is you. I saw. I saw Lady Goes. <laughs> I said that's my mother-in-law at that TikTok. My mother-in-law is on Instagram. She's everywhere. So she knows all the news, all the celebrity gist. She knows it. You understand? So she watches Big Brother Naija. And personally, I do not like putting Big Brother Niger where my children are. The highest thing I can put is that eviction. But all those their pool parties, all those wild things they do there, I don't play Big, Big Brother. And I told my helps do not put Big Brother Niger in the house because the children can come in and see what they're not supposed to see, right? But my mother-in-law likes Big Brother Niger. If I was not a considerate daughter-in-law, or if I was a daughter-in-law that likes to make the house comfortable with excessive rules, I would tell my husband or, or tell her not to put Big Brother Niger that we don't watch it in this house. But I cannot inconvenience her because of my principles. Instead, what I did was to ensure that whenever my mother-in-law is watching Big Brother Niger in the parlor, in the living room, I'll make sure that my children are away. I'll take my children away to their room and put something else for them. That is how to manage relationships. You cannot give her order that, eh, don't watch this, don't do this, don't do that, don't... Come on. Rather than doing that, I will take it upon myself to ensure that my children do not have access to that. And I'll tell her that when she's done, 
she can change it to another channel. When my mother-in-law is in my house, she stays in my room. The house is her house. She's free to enter, take whatever she wants, do whatever she wants. If she's going to church, even when I'm still sleeping, she wants to go for um, early mass. She can use my auto ghillie, wear my wig, use my makeup. Say me, baby, I'm using this your wig. I'll be like, mommy, why? I won't, I won't get upset if she asks me. Because my mother will not ask me. I don't want it. Don't ask me. Anything of mine, use it. It is yours. That is the kind of way I open my heart to, to, to Lady Ngozi. And vice versa. I remember when I just gave birth, no dress was sizing me. I would hold a dress like this. It would be looking big. I would be like, okay, I'll wear this one from immunization the next day. The next day, when I wear it, it's not past here. I'll be like, Jesus, this big garment cannot fit me. <laughs> and time is already going. I wrote to my mother, hello. Mom said, I don't have clothes. I don't have clothes. She'll stand up. Give me one boo boo. <laughs> I'll wear all the boo boos I have in this life. It was my mother, hello, that bought it for me. So why should she come to my house and pitch like a stranger or pitch like a bird? That is another thing that I did that makes our relationship blissful. She is very comfortable around me. And I made my home and will continue to make my home a safe heaven for her where she is free to be herself. She can tell me, baby, tonight I want us to drink something and with Suya. Hey, my Suya is... I'm like, ah, Suya, let's go. I'll go out. I'll go and buy the Suya, buy the drinks. We'll drink and chat and eat. That is how... The home is for her so that is another thing that we can pick from you might feel oh i gave my mother-in-law money i did this for her, i did this for her all those things will not matter if you are making her uncomfortable in the house she will not be happy no matter how much you give her and last but not the least i care for my mother-in-law <laughs> see eh? every woman loves people that care for them that shower them with gifts shower them with care and that is exactly what I do for my mother-in-law. Everybody loves people that are generous to them. I personally do not believe that my mother-in-law is just my husband's responsibility. To me, as I said earlier, my mother-in-law is also my own responsibility. You may not put it in equal proportion as your mother or that eh, everything that you give your mother, you must give your mother-in-law. You may not do it like that if that's not what you want. But you should also consider her as your responsibility no matter how little. No matter how small you can spare. If my mother in law says, Ah, sweetheart, this thing is fine. Oh, I'm like, Do you want it? Take it. Do you like it? Take it. Because I'm like, Oh, <laughs> now me, you won't use love, kill. <laughs> Mama, I would embarrass you with affection. I will bamboozle you and catapult you with care. You cannot outdo me. If you love me, I will overlove you. But some of us, some of we daughters in law, our husband has to hide to do something for their mother. Why? Yesterday night, I wanted to make Chinayenwa's hair and she doesn't allow anybody to touch her hair. She doesn't like pulling or combing her hair. So I had to wait for her to sleep. I was awake till around 12.30 a.m. when I was sure that she was deeply asleep. That's why I come out with my comb, everything, my oil, everything. As I wanted to start combing her hair, she woke up. She doesn't allow anybody to comb her hair. Do you know this girl kept me awake from that 12.30 to 3? I was dying. I wanted to sleep. She didn't allow me to sleep. She was jumping on me. I couldn't sleep. At the time, I was not telling my husband, baby, eh, the stress involved in raising children. You know, some people would think that, oh, raising children is not, is not pay school fees. It's not do this. The little, little stress in between is too much. It's too enormous for, for someone to finish raising her child. Then the wife would come in and now scatter that relationship. Tell, ask yourself as a mother raising your child how you would feel if tomorrow you don't you will become a mother-in-law one day then your son has to hide if he wants to buy you a bag of rice why because he's married is that ideal is that fair how i do it personally you know i'm speaking about my personal experience about my personal life and what i do to also ensure that my mother-in-law <laughs> I don't even look at what her son did for her. Instead, I would even add to it and do for her from my own pockets or personally from myself. I don't have to look at even what my husband is doing for my mother-in-law because when she's caring for me, when she's taking care of me, she doesn't look at my husband's face. Most times when she comes to my house to help me, she didn't, she's not doing it because of her son. She's doing it because she loves me. So why would I now look at her son to do something? Don't get me wrong, there are always exceptions, but you know, if we start discussing every topic with the exceptions, 
topic don't go finish we'll stay here for five hours so don't there's no need for you to start quoting exceptions ah there's a one bisola in ondo state that is how her husband did this i'm not talking about exceptions I'm talking about generally speaking when your husband starts hiding to care for his mother she would know she will know the reason why he's doing that so how do you expect her to love you instead create an avenue where your husband will feel comfortable to discuss with you and you guys will agree on what to do for mama but when he sees that you're always antagonizing all his plans good plans for his mother he will start hiding to do it please let us also learn to care for our mothers-in-law and you do not need to be rich or affluent to do that as a little from your widow's might you can be kind and generous to her so yes these are all i am doing relationships take two to tango and whatever energy i'm giving my mother-in-law she is giving it back to me whatever energy she's giving me i'm giving it back to her and that is how our relationship is thriving so guys yes we have come to the end of today's video if you're new here you see my face for the first time don't forget to hit the subscribe button give this video a thumbs up drop all your comments down in the comment section all your experiences all your ideas everything down in the comment section and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way it's me your girl barista neza and this is nezaville i'll see you guys in my next one for now bye